I kind of feel like at this point, anybody who's even remotely familiar with the iPhone knows that these new iPhone 15 models are going to be coming out with USB-C. And I know that me and a lot of other techie friends in my friend group and a ton of YouTubers were just floored by the fact that the iPhone is finally adopting the standard port that everything else is using. And then we looked at how Apple managed the USB-C ports between the iPhone 15 and the iPhone 15 Pro. And we all said, that is so stupid. And then I took a step back and said, I don't think it actually matters. And today I want to talk about that. So let's dive in. So first off, what did Apple do with these USB-C ports on the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro lineup? Well, if you get the iPhone 15 Pro, it is USB 3 speeds. And they even had a whole section in the keynote talking about how the A17 Pro chip in the new iPhone 15 Pros have a USB 3 controller. And then they talked about the USB-C port on the iPhone 15 and just mentioned some of the general things that you would normally do with a lightning cable, but now it's USB-C. And when you dive into the specs, in Instead of USB 3 speeds like the 15 Pro, you have USB 2 speeds, which are no better than what you had with Lightning. But the division between the 15 Pro and the 15 kind of shows that Apple is doing what they've always done, but now they're doing it with a port that people know a good bit more about if you are more technologically inclined. Because if you look at Apple's history with USB-C, they contributed over 20% of the engineers to help develop this USB-C port. They were one of the first companies to introduce a laptop with USB-C, and I'm pretty sure the first company to introduce an only USB-C laptop with the 2015 MacBook. And they were adopting this so early that they had to make a slide during the keynote for that MacBook explaining what USB-C could do with power, video, and data all coming from one connector. And we've got things like Thunderbolt-capable USB-C on the iPad Pros, We've got the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro. Every Mac has Thunderbolt with the USB-C port, and every iPad except the basic iPad all have USB-C. And stubbornly, the iPhone, up until this most recent model, still had Lightning alongside things like keyboard and mouse and some charging mats and, of course, the headphones. I could almost forgive Lightning for sticking around as an accessory charger just because it doesn't have to really do any data transfers, and so having something that's already a pretty hefty part of Apple's ecosystem just kind of sticking around to charge an accessory, that's fine. And frankly, if you're the kind of person who just syncs all your stuff to the cloud with your iPhone and hardly ever plugs your phone into a computer and the port is just there for charging and maybe interacting with your car's infotainment system, I could understand why Lightning would also make sense. But chances are you're also the kind of person who would get a standard 15 or a standard 14 or whatever the non-pro version of the phone of the year you're buying it would be. On the flip side of that though, techie people like me and a lot of people I know and probably you if you're watching this video are extremely painfully aware of how limiting the USB 2 speeds of Lightning are, especially with Apple doing things like introducing ProRes recording on the iPhone 13 Pro and keeping it around on the 14 Pro. And when you record something like that, it takes up a ton of space on your phone, which is fine because you can get bigger space for the phone, but when you have to move it off of your phone, it takes literally hours to move that data. And airdropping it is a nightmare because AirDrop can't really do big file transfers consistently and reliably, no matter how good Apple says it is. So yeah, us techie people are painfully aware of how brutally slow and limited USB over lightning would be. But that key division in the user base between people who just use their cable to charge or plug into an accessory and people like us who use it to transfer tons of data or connect to bigger, more powerful accessories is most likely what Apple is betting on to be the reason why people won't care about the iPhone 15's USB 2 speeds over Thunderbolt and why the people who do care about that will go with the Pro because that can get faster connections. I mean, to be completely honest, I have a feeling that the people who just upgrade their iPhones when they break or maybe upgrade them every two years on a plan are probably just going to grab a new iPhone and then actually be more frustrated at the fact that it's a new port instead of being happy that it's USB-C because now all of their lightning accessories aren't going to work. Whereas people like us who only use lightning for one thing and one thing only, which is our iPhones and maybe our headphones, are going to be so excited to finally be able to carry one cable around for everything. 
Apple's always been really good at sort of dividing up their user base into key user groups that they can then make products specifically for. And this harkens all the way back to when Steve Jobs came back to Apple and made the Foursquare product lineup. He had the consumer side and the pro side divided up by laptop and desktop. And that still kind of exists at Apple today because you have something like the iPhone 15, which is your consumer grade, everybody gets it lineup. And then you have the iPhone 15 Pro, which the pros and people who actually take advantage of power user features on the phone will buy. And so for us techie people, we see this with the USB-C division on USB 2 with the 15 and three on the 15 Pro, and we complain about it. But when you scale it back and look at it from the consumer perspective, which I've tried to do in a lot of my videos, you got to think the person buying an iPhone 15 with 120 gigs of storage in yellow and they're just going to buy a case and put it in their pocket and it's great for calling the kids and great for taking pictures, they don't care. They really don't. And that's kind of the same way with things people have complained about on Apple laptops and Apple tablets for years as well. I mean, I feel like the only reason Apple gave us a 15-inch MacBook Air was because people didn't want to spend money to get a MacBook Pro because it had way more than what they needed, but they wanted that bigger display. And people were not happy with just having a 13-inch display option. But then people complained about the fact that the MacBooks overheat. Well, you know who did. You can check it out over there. But people complained about the MacBook Air overheating and the 15-inch had some wider thermal options because it dispersed heat better. But the average user doesn't care. Just like the average user doesn't care that their iPhone might take a couple extra minutes to move some photos of the grandkids into their iPhoto library. Or just the Photos app now, since it's not called iPhoto and hasn't been for a while. God, I feel old. Either way, the iPhone 15 is just another example of something that I've talked about for a long time now, which is that it is made for the general consumer. And so having USB-C running at USB 2 speeds is not going to be a big deal for them. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of tech YouTubers complaining about it and saying it's no better than lightning. And I've done this before in the past, and I'll probably have to do it again with this. But when people complain about general consumer products overheating like the MacBook Air or the Mac Mini, and they say that you shouldn't buy it because of that, and people will probably say you shouldn't buy the iPhone 15 because the USB 2 port is going to be extremely slow, you got to dial it back and get into the mindset of somebody who won't mind that because it's not their key focus. Whereas if somebody's talking about recording ProRes video and they're spouting off all the really cool facts about the new camera on the iPhone 15 Pro, chances are they will actually take advantage of that USB-C port at USB 3 speeds. Because like me, for example, you bet your ass I'm going to be transferring data directly to an external drive. I've already been working on how to put a MagSafe magnet ring onto one of my external SSDs to just stick to the phone to keep it for recording. I'm going to be doing so much just because of that port. And I did a whole video talking about how I'm buying the iPhone 15 Pro Max and these port options are gonna kind of unlock some of the things that were really limiting me before with the iPhone 14. You can check that out right over there. But if you're not gonna be doing that, it's not gonna matter. I've said it for years and I'll continue to say it. If you're gonna buy a product, buy something that's going to last you for a long time. Don't just buy something right now that fits exactly your needs at the moment. Look ahead, think ahead. Think about what you'll be doing two years from now, three years from now, depending on how long you hold onto your phones. And if you think that you may be using your phone for a lot of data transfer, a lot of powerful accessories, a lot of video or photo recording, whatever, chances are, you're already leaning towards a pro phone, and maybe this video is just what you need to hear to make that decision. On the other hand, if you just take your phone out, make some phone calls, plug it into your car, listen to some music, pop your headphones in, go on a run, and you really just care about the battery life and having a phone that's gonna last a while and not spending an arm and a leg on it, yeah, you're probably gonna wanna go with the 15 because, well, Data transfer speeds through a port that is going to require you to buy all new cables anyway is probably not your top priority. Now, the last thing I'll say about this is that I've seen a lot of YouTubers talking about how it's so stupid of Apple to do this and why would Apple do this and USB 2 on Type-C connections doesn't make any sense and Apple's so dumb and why is Apple doing this? Apple, Apple, Apple. But the thing you have to keep in mind with USB-C is that USB-C is just kind of a menu of options that have to fit within a port type. So really, the USB standard is a couple of pins and the shape. 
and then anything else within that is kind of fair game. And that's part of the reason why it's so versatile, but also part of the reason why companies like Apple can sort of take advantage of not putting a higher speed port in a lower end phone. Shut up. I mean, technically, if Apple wanted to, they could have just put USB Type-C power delivery on this phone and not given you any data. That would have been a dick move, but it would have been within the USB-C standard and therefore within compliance for the EU regulations that are coming up within the next few years, which is, of course, why they're putting USB-C on the phone anyway. But on the other end of that, they could have also taken the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max and put Thunderbolt in it and just integrated a Thunderbolt controller into the A17 Pro. That is a completely other viable option and just had it within that port. So the wide variety of options within one standard port is what allows companies like Apple to really take advantage of these loopholes, we'll say. And even saying that and blaming the USB-C standard instead of just blaming Apple, I've seen people say that it's still Apple's fault because the USB standard is so ambiguous that they could just take advantage of it, which, yeah, they absolutely did. But I think that in this case, Apple's really not being terribly unreasonable with their port choice just because they know their users well enough that Pro users are probably going to want these higher speed connections, even if USB 3.0 is still not the fastest option. But on the same side, they know that the basic users are really not going to care. At the end of the day, having USB-C on the iPhone is great no matter which speeds you get because it does mean that we do not have to rely on a proprietary cable that's been around way too long. And we have crazy speeds for the people who want it, and we have just another port for people who don't care. And, well... It makes a lot more sense on the Pro because of the USB-C speeds because, well, I'm transferring what should be now my last video off my iPhone over USB 2, and when I did it last night, it was nightmarish. I don't know why I'm doing it again, but I am. So yeah, obviously that kind of makes sense for having USB-C speeds. Anybody else, it's not gonna matter. But that's been it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I actually kind of miss doing these like really rushed short videos in a very condensed amount of time to try to get stuff out. I've done three videos this week, which is just nuts to me. And I, I missed doing this kind of stuff. But man, I don't miss the late nights. I just miss the, the rush and the fun. So hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give the video a like. If you want to see more stuff like that, make sure to subscribe. I also got some other channels. I do a covers and commentary channel where I talk about music, do some covers. Uh, you can check that out. There will be a link down below if you care. And aside from that, I hope to see you all in the next video. Leave some comments down below letting me know what you all think. And uh, I'll see you all there. Make sure to be there and have a good one.